on this computer. There we go. Now it says it. All right. Well, good morning, y'all. I am so happy to see you. And I'm so excited that you are all going for this honor. I think it is a fantastic honor. What better to be recognized for than your integrity? So we are excited that you all are taking the time with us today. Um, I am excited to share with you the information about the award. And I believe I have a past winner that is gonna be signing on here in a little bit as well. Here she comes now, um, who will be able to share some of her information with you as well um, regarding her experience. So I am going to share screen and we will start talking a little bit about this fun stuff. Um, so the better business, I don't know why I'm having the struggles today, y'all. No one should have the struggles. Slideshow from beginning. Can you all see? Perfect. Yeah. Okay. So the story is, is the Torch Award. So let me tell you a little bit about the background so you can know a bit. Of, um, I'm Sherry Sword. For those of you that don't know me, I am the Vice President of Communications at the Better Business Bureau. Been here 26 years in January. Yeah, I started when I was a babe. Don't, so we're going to go with that. Um, but my contact information is there. Please don't hesitate to reach out to me. We can be besties between now and March and forever on forward. So don't hesitate to reach out to me. If you have any questions about the process, I am there for you and I'm happy to help you. So what we're gonna do today is go over the whole ins and outs of the Eclipse. And if I say Eclipse Integrity Awards, ignore me, it's Torch Awards. I'm having a hard time with the transition so this is our first year. I've been calling it the Eclipse Integrity Awards for 26 years, and now I have to change it to the Torch Awards. So bear with me, and we'll all slap my hands when I call it the wrong thing. Um, but we're going to go over the pro process about why you should apply, what the eligibility requirements are, what the judges do, the criteria, best practices, supporting documents, site visit. And Christy Fielding is with us from Wable, who was one of last year's winner to share her experience with the process as well. So you can't get an inside scoop. So pick her brain as you talk to her. So let's talk a little bit about the awards themselves. We started the Eclipse Integrity Awards back in 1994. We were one of the first BBBs across the nation to have an awards program. Um, this year we're transitioning to the BBB's Torch Awards for Ethics, which is a national awards program. We had been grandfathered in because we've been doing it for so long. The Eclipse Integrity Awards was our brand. This year, our national association said, nope, everybody on the same playing book. So we are changing to the BBB's Torch Awards. So that's the process we're in now. It is still streamlined. It is still a simple online application. So it should not be tough at all to do. Basically, what you're going to do is you're going to tell us about your leadership's character. You're going to tell us about your organization's culture. You're going to talk about your customer relationships and talk about how you deal with the community and your reputation in the community. Okay. Yes. Um, yes, that's fine. So those are the four C's that you're going to be talking about throughout your application. So why go for the award? Well, the reasons are many. Um, first of all, we are hoping to go back to our 500 plus awards dinner next year. We had 300 this year, um, just to be safe with the governor mandates. But next year, we're hoping we'll be back to the 500 plus local business leaders. It's a huge awards dinner. Um, it is, we like to say, as one of our past winners says, it's not your typical rubber chicken dinner. Um, it is off scale. It is, we have a lot of fun. There's a lot of networking. So it's a great opportunity to showcase your business. Um, you get to display the award, which this year is a beautiful crystal ball award, so you'll enjoy that. The pride among your employees and their sense of accomplishment for being recognized for doing the right thing will be phenomenal. Media exposure is going to be a bonus, both from what we do, as well as what you can do for yourself as your company. You can use the logo on your promotional pieces, whether you're a finalist or a winner. 
I mean, it's just a unique awards program. As I said earlier, it's to be recognized for your integrity says a lot. And um, we all value our integrity and we protect it. So it's a great opportunity to do that. Um, and, you know, honestly, now recruiting staff is tough. It's one great way to recruit your staff to say that you do business the right way. And what I hear more and more and more from companies is it's tough right now to recruit talent. So this can be that thing that puts you over the edge. Cool. So let's talk a little bit about eligibility. Um, and it is open to um, for-profit companies, 501c3s as well as 501c6s. Um, of all sizes, doesn't matter whether you have zero employees and you're all volunteer run or you have 500 employees. Um, you do not have to pay BBB dues in order to apply for it and win. You do not have to be a charity seal holder in order to apply for it and win. It's not required. However, if you're a for-profit and a 501c6, you have to have a B rating. If you're not sure what your rating is, you can go to your business profile on the BBB website and find out what your rating is. The BBB rates companies from an A plus to an F. Um, so we are saying the cream of the crop are going for this award. So we're saying you have to have a, a B rating or higher. For the 501c3s, you have to meet our charitable advisory standards. If you don't, we can help you through that process at the same time you're putting together your application. So if you don't meet or you're not sure if you meet those um, standards, let me know. Let's talk and we'll figure out how to make that happen for you in time. Um, you have to do business in the BBB service area and the counties that we serve are listed here. Um, so you do have to do business within our service area. You have to do business for three years. You didn't just open your doors. We want to see some tenure for that integrity and all of your financial obligations should be meeting, being met. The other thing is, is you can't have one within the last three years. There's too many outstanding organizations in our community that we don't wanna just keep honoring the same ones over and over and over. So we say you can't compete for three years once you've won. You government agencies are not eligible to apply. Um, we are saying that we are a business trade association. We have our charitable advisory service. So those are the organizations that can apply. You have to disclose if you have any major lawsuits. Okay, we all have lawsuits. We understand how that goes. I am talking about ones that we would report in your business profile, such as government actions, not those angry customers from hell. That's not what I'm talking about, the civil suits. Um, you can't serve on the planning committee and you can't be a major sponsor, which be considered a principal or a students of integrity sponsor. Any questions about anything so far? Gary, I do. This is Drew uh, hey, Donald. Uh, we won the award um, 2000, uh, 2019, but that was for our Cincinnati office. Does that apply or can we still? Um, what company are you with? Donald and McCarthy. Yes, I talked to somebody from your office and you can apply. Okay. When you apply, you need to reference that's what's going on in our market. Okay. Of course, you're governed by your headquarters, so there's going to be some of that, but you really need to focus on your local happenings. Okay. Makes that sense. makes sense? Yes, thank you. Absolutely. Any other questions? Great question. Um, Sherry, I might have missed this because I, I had a, a walk-in that came in. Um, is there only one person that can win the Torch Award, or is there several? There are several. So okay. four businesses will be recognized. Okay. And there will be two nonprofits recognized. And there have been years when we've had three nonprofits recognized. Okay. So there will be six to seven winners. Okay. Cool. Thank you. I'm sorry. Oh, you no, don't be yourself. sorry. That's awesome. Any question, other Carrie? questions? Yeah. Yes. Um, uh, will these slides be shared after the call? They will be. I would love to share them with you. And I'm recording too, so I'll show the recording with you as well. Cool? Cool. All right. So let's talk about judging a little bit. 
The entries will be reviewed by a panel of judges independent of BBB staff and board of directors. I don't even look at them. All I look at is the front page to figure out what category you go in. Um, so you don't have to make a big presentation or anything to us. We don't look at them. It's the judges that look at them and they're community leaders. Chances are when you meet with them or they come for their site visit, you're gonna recognize one or two of them. Um, they will make personal site visits to the award finalists. So that will be the second step of the process. Um, the decisions are final. And every year someone calls me and says, are you kidding me? That company sucks. No, they don't. I know my judges do their due diligence. They are very passionate about what they do. They even go above and beyond the nominations. If they think they've heard something, they go onto websites and look to see if it's true. Um, so their decisions are final. I have complete faith in them. They've done it, many of them, for as long as I've been with the BBB, which has been a long time. Um, and they can also choose not to issue an award if they don't feel there's no one worthy in a category, which has happened as well. So, but they are a fantastic crew. You'll love working with them. And whether you win or not, I will give you their feedback so that you can build your business even further because they provide you with great feedback to help you build your business. So let's talk about the criteria. I told you about the four C's. So the first criteria is character. And this is gonna come from your leadership. It should be written from their perspective. You can ghostwrite it for them, but it should be coming from their perspective. Um, and you're gonna talk about these three questions that you see highlighted here. I recommend that you use these three questions as subheads in your essay so that you make sure you cover them and the judges know you've answered those questions. So as you're putting together your essays for this criteria, subheads are key, I think. Um, and that way the judges know exactly what you're trying to get across to them. But you're gonna be talking about how your leadership sets the tone for the organization and they walk the talk, okay? So that's the first criteria. The second criteria is gonna be about the culture of trust that is being created within your organization. And again, these are the three questions that you should answer within your essay. How do you not unite your team around your vision and mission? How do you empower your employees to shape those expectations? And what practices your company does to demonstrate the leadership's commitment to individuals, employees? Um, so those are the three questions. Now, if you don't want to use those whole big long sentences, summarize them when you use them as your subheads. You're welcome to do that as well. But I really would use them as the basis as you're putting together your essay. So the third criteria you're going to talk about, the third essay, is going to be about your customer relationships. And you're going to talk about these three questions here. Can you see, is my participants block, block, blocking? No? Okay. No, I can see fine. Okay, cool. Um, so these are the three questions you're going to talk about. You're going to talk about how you've gone above and beyond. You're going to talk about your commitment to honesty and how you empower employees to pro proactively address issues that they may come across. Then the fourth issue is community. And this is all about what you're doing to make the Miami Valley a, great, a better place. So you're gonna talk about those programs or events that you do with your team. You're gonna talk about how your employees are involved in the community. And you're gonna talk about those contributions that you make, whether it's financial or whether it's in-kind services. So you'll talk about that. Maybe you talk about partnerships that as a nonprofit you have. Um, and use that information there to share in regards. But those are the four criteria that you're gonna talk about. Four short essays, they don't have to be lengthy. Um, I would suggest not making them more than two pages, but uh, make sure that you answer the questions that are listed here. Any questions about the criteria? Okay. I am not very formal, y'all. So if you all have any questions as we go along, do not hesitate to say, hey, Sherry. And I am happy to stop and answer any questions that you all have. 
So let's talk about best practices as you're putting this together. And you all are in a great space to do it. You have about three months to get it done. So rock on with your bad selves that you're this far along. Um, but remember that the award is about ethics and integrity. So make sure to use those words when you're putting your essays together. Um, it's not about your impact on community or the profits, but it's how those best practices are used to make that happen. Um, it's how your organization does what it does to make it different. Be a storyteller and tell your story. If your company is not headquartered in the Miami Valley, Drew, um, remember to reflect your local activities, okay? Carefully select your letters of support that you include don't include 150 letters of support. You want to make them meaningful. You want to make sure they know what it is you're going for with this honor. Let me give you a for instance. If you go to a chamber of commerce and ask them for a letter of support, you're going to get a form letter. And I've had a chamber person tell me that very thing. So I'm not coming out of nowhere with it. You want to make sure that they know what the honor is you're going for and what you want them to say. So make them very meaningful. It's not about quantity, it's about quality. Um, and really don't create anything new for this. This is all things that are in the DNA in your business. All you're doing is uploading them into the entry. So don't feel that you have to go out and create anything new at all. Examples are really, really important. That's those supporting documents. You want to show your story and demonstrate your ethics and integrity and how you go about it. Um, use stories, statistics, awards, talk about things that you do in your industry. Maybe you do tours for industry groups. Um, also talk about how your organization measures its efforts so that you know you're doing a great job. Use personal stories, what motivation you provide to your team what inspirational things you do to tell your story um, and include that within your examples. Take your time, write things out ahead of time, maybe do an outline of what you wanna talk about in your essays, upload those documents that you want in your application. Make sure that your application is easy to understand, put it together from your judge's eyes. You know, they may be looking at 25 to 40 different completed nominations Make it really clear what you want them to see. Bullets are great. Um, highlights, great. Um, white space you can use to your benefit, but make it really clear. Put things in context. Talk about your trends, your benchmarks. Um, tell them your goals as they relate to ethics. And um, talk about how you go above and beyond in your industry. What are you doing different? What makes you the bomb in your industry? Cool. Questions about that? Y'all don't have to be shy for sure. So let's talk about supporting documents. And this is a list of them. And this is only for brainstorming purposes. You don't have to include all of these. You may have other things that may seem important for your company. But these are the supporting document ideas that you can include. So it's those simple things. You know, your mission and vision statement, you already have it. Your handbook, you already have it. Um, some of the unique things that I may suggest is go to your team and ask them stories about when they've gone beyond the call of duty. It's really cool. It's kind of a, a neat eye opener. Um, I can tell you, for example, I use this story all the time. So if you've been to this seminar before, I apologize. But it is a great story that I love is Rumpke was a winner one year. And they went to their team and asked, hey, tell us stories about when you've gone above and beyond. And they thought they knew it all until they found out that one of their drivers was going along on his route and found a customer of theirs going through their trash sobbing. And that driver stopped to find out what was going on, ends up that customer had lost her diamond ring in the trash. And he stopped his route and helped her find that diamond ring. You can bet he created a raving fan and what a great story to tell for his business. They didn't know about that because the, the employee did it because it was the right thing to do and they just did it. They didn't go bragging about that they did it, but that story came out through this process, which was a cool story to find out for them. 
So find out about those above the Call of Duty stories. Um, also try doing a two minute video. Super easy, doesn't have to be professionally done. You can use your cell phone to do it. Um, cell phones are great nowadays. And go and do a two minute video about your organization. Ask a couple customers what they think. Ask some key employees what they think and put together that two minute video. If you are not familiar, Animato, it's A-N-I-M-O-T-O, -O, is a free program online. It's like PowerPoint for video. It is the most, if I can do it, you all can do it. It is so easy and it literally is PowerPoint for video. Um, so you can use that to put together this video. It's sharing of that again. It is A N I M O T O. It is a totally dumbed down video program. It's awesome. Sherry, do you did did anybody submit videos last year? Is that something that we can see? Um, you know what? I will go through and I will find some samples and I'll send you a couple. Thank you. Yeah, I would love to. But don't go hiring anybody to do it. Um, really and honestly, your cell phone will work perfectly. We don't want you to break the bank putting together this nomination. Um, so it's a cool thing to do in regards to that. Other things you can do is, you know, talk about those tough decisions that were really difficult in the short term, but they were the right thing in the long term. And I understand you're not going to have anything on that, but write a short paragraph and include that in your supporting documents. Other ideas are here as well, you know, take pictures of your employee events that you have and or that you already have and use those. Nonprofits include your board of directors activity and what you all do in regards to that. Another very cool thing that you can do super simply is send an email to your staff and ask them what boards and committees and community groups they serve on. Because everywhere they talk, they expand your footprint. You can bet whether I serve on the Culture Works Board or I do something for the Girl Scouts or I'm doing something for church. I'm talking about BBB and your staff should be doing the same thing and expanding your footprint. So send an email out tomorrow asking them what they are doing in the community and include that list within your supporting documents. So that's a really easy way. Uh, and you'll be surprised to find out what are some of your team members do in their community. It's kind of cool. It's kind of fun. Um, I, one thing I kind of like about this process is it's kind of a self-discovery process and you learn a lot about your organization. So I won't go through and read all of these. I will send you the overheads, um, but there's some great information and ideas for you for those supporting documents. Cool. Any other questions? Okay. So here's how easy it is to do, and then I'm going to turn it over to Christy and Christy, and I am going to give props to Christy here. My original winner um, actually had to go to the doctor's today at the last minute, and Christy jumped in at the last minute this morning. So thank you. I appreciate you, Christy, a lot for jumping in and doing this, um, uh, the bomb. But when you go through and do the process, what you're going to do is you're going to go to bbb.org. And you're gonna click on these three lines and you're gonna scroll down to Torch Awards and you're gonna to come to this page um, and you'll see it when you do that. When you come to that page, what you're gonna do is you're going to go to enter your business or charity, not the nominate a business. That is for the public to nominate people for these honors. Um, all they have to do is give me the company name and the contact information where you're gonna go here is enter your business or charity. And that's where you're gonna submit all the information that we've been talking about. Once you go to that page, it's going to take you to this page, which is gonna go over all that criteria that we've all just talked about. And it will be a good repeat. So you make sure you know what you're including in it. And then you're gonna start, oh, start entering your entry information. Yeah, and it's the basic who, what, where's, company name, how many employees. Yeah. Right. I'm here at the office and I've got him with me. He just threw up a bunch of yellow. Oh, somebody, I, somebody, if you can mute yourselves, that would be awesome. Oh, I'm not just it. It's all good. 
Um, so just basic entry information, not bad at all. And then what you're going to do is you are going to start uploading information. So write out your essays in Word and then copy and paste them into this box right here. So put it in Word and then copy and paste. And here is where you're going to upload those supporting documents. There isn't a limit. Um, what you may do as you're doing those supporting documents, you may put them all together in hard copy and maybe put your tags, your highlighting, whatever you want to do to make things stand out, then scan them into one PDF and upload them that way. I've seen that done a lot, it just makes it very easy to see what you want the judges to see. Again, do those supporting documents from the judge's eyes. For instance, you don't necessarily wanna put the whole handbook in there, but include the pages that have to do with ethics and integrity. Cool? Now, I know it can be like, I can't get this all done in one seating. Have you seen what my day looks like? That's fine. Another very cool function is there's a save tool. So you don't have to do it all at once. You can use that save function and come back to it. Okay. I would suggest you don't do it alone. I don't want you to run from me in the grocery when you see me in March, um, but get some help to help you with this. Um, maybe form a staff committee, people in each department that can help you and provide documents that you need. Rally volunteers, maybe you have a board member or somebody that is looking for a little something extra to do. So rally those volunteers. And it is the holiday season. There are college kids home that are looking for something to do. Um, hire them. It's a great thing for them to put on their resume. Um, I can tell you that um, Andy Macy, who works for the food bank, he put their book together twice. They won the second time. He's now an employee of the food bank um, by going through this process and learning so much about the company. So look for interns. We are a college town. We have Central State, we have UD, we have um, Wright State. All, put those kids to use and have them help you out as well. So it is so doable, y'all. I don't want you to panic. I hope I have not scaring anybody off. Set a schedule for yourself so you get it done and you're not pushing everything all at the last. Today, go through and draft up a communication from your leadership saying that you're going for this award. Um, I know Think Patented, Neil sent out an email that day and said, hey, I'm telling you as a staff that we're going for this honor. We are going to win. So when Christy comes to you for information, please provide it to her in a timely manner. Um, so send that communication out to your team today. Set up boxes in your common areas or intranet files are another good way to do it for people to throw things in that they think may be something you want to put into the application. That way you don't have to go hunting and pecking and asking for everything. You can just sort through those folders, those boxes to decide what you want to include and rally that help. So think about that today. Then for the rest of the month, just send a quick email out asking for those letters of support send a quick email out to staff asking stories about times that they've gone above and beyond or they know someone else that went above and beyond. Sometimes people don't like to toot their own horns, um, as well as ask for those boards and committees that they serve on. Then enjoy the holidays. Chill out, relax, time family, and enjoy yourselves. In January, write your summaries, take those first drafts, and gather those supporting documents and start putting them together and take the whole month of January to make that happen. You're looking at three to four essays, two pages each. It's pretty easy to do, especially when you have those outlines of those three questions you need to answer. In February, review and fine tune it, review and fine tune it, have others look at it. Sometimes we get stuck in our own jargon and our own ways of doing things. Have others, people offer you their feedback. Um, I can tell you that past winners would love to do that for you. I'm sure Christy wouldn't mind doing it for you. I'm speaking for you, Christy, I'm sorry. Um, I know Patty Lovely from the House of Bread, who was a winner said she would be willing to do it as well. Um, so, um, Tom Kennedy is a great resource. So if you, I'm happy to provide some, uh, some people for you to talk to to look at it. 
March 1st, you're going to submit that entry to the BBB. But March 2nd, you're going to start planning your site visit. So let's talk about that just a little bit. Site visits are April 1st. Mark your calendars now. This date does not waver. April 1st is the date for site visits. And what's going to happen is I'm going to call you on March 25th and say, congratulations, you are a finalist for the Torch Award. My judges are coming on April 1st at three o'clock. So mark that date now. Anybody that you want to speak at that site visit, make sure they have that date on their calendars um, so that they are there. What you're going to do is show that what was in your written application is really in day-to-day -day operation. Talk, dear God, let me just say this, underline it, use the words integrity and ethics in that site visit. I've had a site visit where that did not happen and that stood out to the judges. It, it screamed at them that they never use the words ethics and integrity. Use those words. Um, you can use a PowerPoint presentation, you can do a tour, you can have key staff people talk, you can have clients talk. However you want to do that site visit, you can do a combination of all, um, but you have 30 to 45 minutes to tell your story. Be prepared, time it out, practice it so everybody knows who's saying what. Make sure you don't have somebody really windy eating up your time um, because the judges will leave when that 45 minutes in is over in fairness to the rest of the finalists. It's not fair that someone gets 50 minutes and somebody only got 45 when it comes down to it. Um, but they're not gonna come and ask you questions. That's a mistake that people often make is, well, I'll just answer their questions when they get here. No, consider this a presentation and you're telling them what you want them to know for that 45 minutes. I highly recommend not having one person talk for that whole 45 minutes. Y'all are tired of hearing me talk now, I get it. Your judges don't wanna hear that either. So have other people tell your story as well. So I can tell you a story again that the judges shared with me is the, the CEO, the leadership person, whoever that was, talked for the entire 45 minutes, even told a story about an employee and what happened to that employee. The employee was standing right next to him. That employee could have told that story and it would have been much more impactful coming from the employee. So think about who can help you tell your story and go that route. Any questions about the site visit? It is a game changer. So you may going into the site visits be the leader point score wise, but when the site visit happens, it can flip. So use the words ethics and integrity, tell your story, stick to the 45 minutes um, and be ready. Cool? All right, Patty, her information is here. Unfortunately, she had to go to the doctor this morning unexpectedly, but she is willing to talk to you and offer any advice. But my friend Christy is here. Um, so Christy, I'm gonna turn it over to you and will you share how you approach the application, how you planned your site visit, as well as what winning the award has meant to your company? Sure. So don't hold it against me that I'm uh, maybe unprepared here, so I'm going to wing it. But um, fortunately, I, I was the person for our company that did a majority of the work to get this all prepared. Um, you know, going into those questions, this whole process can seem very overwhelming, um, you know, a, maybe a daunting task. But um, I would say that the whole process is extremely rewarding. Um, those questions, you know, my recommendation would just be very concise on your answers, you know, stick to the point. Um, don't, don't fluff the writing to, to make it seem more than it really is, um, because I would guess that the judges can see right through that. Um, I would say, you know, try to pick someone um, in your company to be kind of the lead for you that, you um, you know, doesn't feel like this application process is a punishment. Um, and they, they truly believe um, all of the information that they're, they're putting out there. Um, because I think 
that that really shows to the judges that if there's that passion um, for what you're actually saying in the material that you're you're going over, um, I think it'll show up in the writing and I think it'll show up then in your on-site visit. Um, you know, Sherry mentioned that it's like a, a time of self-discovery. We learned that during this whole process, it was kind of a, a self-reflection time period to, to really kind of step back and, and take a minute to really um, realize all of the many things that our company does, whether it be for our, for our clients or for our own um, staff themselves. Um, so that was kind of a really nice thing to be able to, to, to see all of that in one place and one kind of application um, and then be able to talk about that with our staff um, at like company meetings and, and staff meetings and things. Um, so really it is your time to brag. You know, I, I don't think you can say enough about your company. Nothing's too little to say, um, nothing's too big. Put it all in there. You know, as long as it's uh, about ethics and integrity, put it all in there. Um, you know, Sherry mentioned, you know, do you have a mission and vision statement? You know, not only do you have them, but do you actually do anything with them? So many companies have a mission statement and probably not a single employee could tell you what the mission statement is or the tagline from that mission statement, whatever that is. Um, like our company, for instance, everybody truly knows, you know, doing the right thing as part of our mission and stuff. So like everybody knows that. And so being able to show that in your writing and your answers, um, that it's more than just a document that you have in some book on a shelf. Um, let's see here. Also with your site visit, you know, some of the things that we did, and I'd be more than willing to share any of our information um, with you guys, how we approached it, but like our site visit was actual virtual this year. So that probably made it even a little bit more scary because we had to figure out how to say everything we could possibly say about our company in 45 minutes, be concise, um, but also do it virtually. <laughs> so um, we did videos. So we had our financial advisor talk um, about our company and um, we talked about like our 401k match and you know how, what we did for our employees in that process and um, our benefits uh, individual talked to you know about great insurance and how we're taking care of our um, associates. Um, we had our attorney briefly talk and each one of these people specifically mentioned integrity and, um, and ethics in their conversations as well. They made sure to say those words um, but our attorney came on and, you know, no lawsuits, no legal issues, basically just covered that piece because that's a big piece that they, you know, they can might want to hear. Um, we do a leadership program with University of Dayton. So we had their director um, say a few words for us. Um, we had one of our nonprofit customers where we do a lot of volunteer work. He did a video for us and um, it's actually a company that has wanted to apply for this many a times, but is kind of overwhelmed by it, but they do such great things. I encourage them in the process, like, please do the process. Um, don't, you know, don't, don't get worried about the time because it's well worth it if you go through the process. Um, and then we had a, a customer who had had an issue that we were able to take care of and do the right thing for. And so they, they were more than willing to put that in writing and stuff. So we did a um, PowerPoint presentation that day. We had these, a bunch of short videos. We had three videos from employees who talked about integrity and what um, that meant to them and how they felt that um, our company, um, you know, lived by that. Um, let's see here. I'm trying to think else kind of after the fact. Um, you know, I, I do a lot of our social media and stuff. So I was posting that, hey, we, we were a, a finalist and we we're going through this process. And I actually had um, a friend from high school who was looking for a job and who had been contemplating coming to our company. And that was kind of like the final straw that made them say, hey, Christy, I want to apply. And now he's an employee of our company. So we've had um, situations where people have seen those posts and have been interested in the company as a result of it. And then when we won it, obviously that made it even better. Um, we've also had... Um, um, people who saw it that are now clients of ours and we're, you know, providing them services because they saw that we were um, either a finalist or the winner and they thought that was, that was pretty, pretty good. So um, they wanted to at least give us a call and give us a shot. So, you know, we're getting our foot in the door with some places because of it and we've landed some of those as customers. So, um, 
yeah, I, I guess I'll stop rambling and see if anybody has any questions. Pick her brain. Now is a great time to do it. She's more than happy to help. And right. I can say that I didn't have the privilege of going through this presentation and I just picked it up and went with it. So this was a, this is helpful. So I would have loved to have asked a winner. <laughs> what the heck did you do? Did you fully submit it online then? Or yes. did you create a, a hard copy? We did everything online. Okay. But it's not a bad idea to keep a hard copy for yourself. Um, it's a great resource for you to use for your team, um, for donors, for um, fundraising. I know back in the day, y'all probably heard it used to be a two inch three ring binder, a lot of work. Um, but I know some of those past winners have kept that and share it with key constituents and it's been a really valuable tool for them. Hey, Christy. Yes. This is Drew, uh, I'm just curious, who did you have at the onsite visit? um uh, when when they came um so we we had the presentation they did not actually come on site um they did a virtual um session with us so the, the okay. so the three um judges were on there um myself um our president and owner of the company was on um trying to think of anybody else we had an individual um step into the session he wasn't on most of the call but when we asked him to kind of step in he stepped into this um the video for a second to tell his story um and then the rest of it because it was virtual we just made sure to do recordings of the people um or or to get their statements okay well, do you guys feel as though it'd be helpful um i don't know if you're able to do this but if a, a client or customer were to be there and give their Absolutely. That's um, unfortunately the customer we had asked a couple of customers, but um, you know, we, we kind of found out about the meeting um, last minute. I didn't have it on my calendar because I didn't go through the session. So we kind of found out about it and was like, hey, you've got like two days to get ready. And it was like, oh, geez. OK, um, so we called some people um, and because of COVID and everything this year, um, they weren't able to be in person. They were willing to give their, you know, their um, the reference to us and, and gave us very nice um, wording to put in the PowerPoint. But had it not been that situation, I would mean, absolutely would have loved to have that customer or customers um, present. Uh, just okay. wasn't the situation for us this year, but I would have had them, if it would be like this year, I would have had them in, in person. Great. Um, and you might have already done this. I apologize if I missed it. Um, but what do you feel like are the, the three um, key factors that helped you guys win uh, the award? Um, I think that um, we, we were able to answer all of the questions very um, thoroughly and concisely. I think that the people that we had involved in our, um, we'll say on-site visit, virtual visit, um, they were all, they were people who truly believed in our company, believed in integrity and ethics and, you know, not only speak it, but live it. And we were able to reflect that in what they said in the, in the call, um, okay. but also in those videos. Gotcha. Perfect. So really it was <clears throat> the people um, answering the questions thoroughly and then the video uh, really helped out a ton too. I think so. And then, you know, just the, the essays that we submitted, there's, you know, the three essays and um, mm -hmm. Sherry, do you still have, I think like the 4,000 word limit or something? Um, there's not a limit this year, but like I said, it's not about quantity. It's about quality. Well, so, we had a limit. So I had to stop. In my, <laughs> I didn't want to, you know, you had to be very concise. So I think maybe that helped us because we needed to make sure that we said all the important stuff. So, um, but we did a lot of attachments and, and included all of those things that um, were related, you know, training programs to, to make sure our people were taken care of and, um, you know, our ethics statement, our mission statements, parts of our handbook, some of the trainings that we go through to make sure that they're prepared to, to do the right thing in the field. Um, so anything that was related that we could possibly think of that was related to this, we included it and we made sure there was a reason for us to include it, not just because it was another piece of paper to include. Okay. 
It's very helpful. Thank you. The other thing I would add is I would practice it so that everyone knows what they're going to say, how long they have to say it. Um, some of the best site visits when they were live actually had somebody with a stopwatch timing it. So everybody knew how they had to go and when they had to do it. So like the CW one years ago, and the judges were just impressed because John Hannon met them at the door, said, hi, my name's John Hannon, I'm the general manager, and I have three seconds to get you to this person. And then that person talked forever long they had, and then he kept moving them along in order to hear those people in a certain time frame. Um, Christy from Think Patented kind of did the same thing, is she had them practice beforehand um, so everybody knew how long. Um, in fact, there was one speaker the day of that says, she's like, you know, you only have two minutes to say what you have to say. Oh, and the person said, I'm gonna take as long as I need to. And she's like, no, you have two minutes because we have to get this on so everybody can say what they need to say. Um, so I would practice and make sure who's speaking that they're not gonna eat your time up. We had our PowerPoint presentation even, you would probably think that that would make it easier and people can't really go off script, but that was absolutely not the case. Um, I had every slide down to exactly how long that they could talk about things. Um, so I know our, our president, he can be long-winded sometimes. Um, he likes to go off on a lot of tangent stories. They're all great stories and meaningful stories, but we didn't have time for all the stories. So um, at one point in time in the video, I think I got up and went to his office and was like, knock it off, like you're done. <laughs> and, um, you know, we, we stayed on task, but um, the time really does fly. Um, and I can tell you when you're done with it, if you put as much energy and effort into it as we did, you are exhausted and ready to go home for the day. I mean, it's a good exhaustion. I would not trade it for anything. I was very honored to be able to do the whole process. Um, but you, you know, you definitely, you're like, whew, that was a lot for 45 minutes. <laughs> Any other questions for Christy? Reach no out to her, take note of her contact information. She's a great resource and she's a Browns fan. So I like her a lot. So <laughs> reach out to her. Woo -woo. Right. Go dogs. All right. Season tickets in the dog pound. <laughs> there you go. So just to kind of wrap up for y'all, based on the award categories, it is based on number of full-time employees. Traditionally, there are four business categories and there are two nonprofit categories. I can't tell you where those are going to be the breakdown wise. I used to preset those numbers and it ended up people weren't competing apples to apples. So I wait till the completed applications come in and I look for where those natural breaks are and go from there. Um, sorry. Again, nominations must be received by March 1st. That is the deadline. It cannot be March 2nd. I can accept it tomorrow if you want to get it all done. I can not accept it on February 28th, but March 1st is the deadline in fairness to all of the finalists. And I am here for you. So please don't hesitate to reach out to me via email, via phone, that's my cell phone number. Um, so don't hesitate to reach out and I will make this webinar available to you all um, so that you have it. And there is a nomination seminar on our website already that you can take a look at as well. Um, so next, just go to this web address, 2022 Dayton Torch Awards is a bit.ly address. And you can take a look at the application process and start it when you're ready. Um, again, it's due March 1st, but I wish you the very best of luck. Please don't hesitate to reach out to me. Um, I am happy to help you however I can help you. I'm sure Christy feels the same way, Patty does. So I'm happy to help however I can. Any final questions? All right. Well, I hope you all have a great holiday. Um, you have lots of family, friends, health, fun, um, and I look forward to talking to you all in the new year, as well as seeing your completed nominations and applications, um, but have a great season. See ya. Bye. Thanks, Thank Sharon. You. See you later. Bye. See ya. Bye.
Thank you, Christy, again, for jumping in. No problem. Anytime. All right. Take care. Bye. Bye.